Father Andrew Tregubov calls this little church in Claremont home. Oh Christ our God and Originally from Moscow, he's been leading the Holy Resurrection Parish for nearly 40 years. But when his duties for the church are complete each day, he retreats to his studio, where he uses his paintbrushes to bring Christian icons to life. This is the rectory where we are, and, uh, and used to, this used to be a par parlor of the family house that, that the parish bought in 1940. And um, so uh, and that was the office of the priest before me, and little by little I converted that to my uh, workroom. So this is my studio. <laughs> This is uh, uh, a commission, a part of the commission uh, that I'm working on uh, for the church uh, in Palatine, Illinois, outside of Chicago. His works fill spaces of worship all over the country, but Father Andrew doesn't consider himself an artist. No, not really. I'm an iconographer. I don't know what it means, actually, or most people don't, but that's beside the point. I think that the, the, the goal of iconography is to make the living person of Christ and the saints present. The Orthodox priest hasn't always painted icons. He actually began painting as a teenager in order to impress his wife. It wasn't until he grew older that the ancient Christian art became his focus. I don't express myself. Uh, the icon is born uh, with three active elements, just like a human being. What are the three agents in making an icon? It is one is an iconographer. The other is the church because it is not original work. You can see that I look at many, many different models. And the third one, of course, is our Lord himself, or the person who is depicted. So when I, and when I attempt to paint his icon, he reveals himself. First of all, he reveals himself to me, but with me to the whole church. <laughs> Father Tregubov paints his icons using egg tempura. The icon has to be done with minimal means and allowing everything to be free. If you try, if you take acrylic paint or even oils and you try to uh, erase all these inventions that were put in, you get egg tempura. I mean, because it's the most simple binder and pigment. That's what paint is. Egg yolk combined with pigments and some vinegar breathes life into these images. So basically the paints are that are used in iconographers they are pretty thin. So they, uh, very rarely you need to have a paint that is kind of a more pasty. And the reason for that is, is, is very, very simple. The space of the icon has to be filled with light, has to be transparent. So any surface that is not transparent is an obstacle to light. The application is very thin, so it dries quickly, and you can, you can go over it again. So you basically uh, apply washes or semi-transparent paint and build the, the intensity. The whole point is to bring out that living presence of the person from inside. So it is all lit up from inside. His greatest expense the brushes. Kolinsky uh, is, is, is a type of a animal that lives in Siberia. And so, and it's made from, from the tails of the male animals. So this is a very, very precious thing. And I go through them quite a lot. People think that the icons have to be done in, in one particular way. That's not, not true. My wife was actually an embroiderer, so she used the fiber art to create icons, which is also very ancient. You can use encaustic paint, which beeswax, you can use mosaics, you can do all kinds of things.
Many of the icons that welcome you into the Holy Resurrection Church are the work of Father Andrew. When uh, a regular person who had never, never seen an icon before looks at the icon, they say, well, boy, these are weird because they're flat. They, 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 don't, they don't have shadows. They don't, you know, I mean, they're, and even the faces are kind of distorted. The icon is designed to draw you into that intimate encounter with Christ so that he can embrace you. That's the whole point. The halos. Uh, many people uh, assume, of course, there is an all kinds of oriental uh, uh, mythology about the halos and stuff like that. Well, in Christian uh, iconography, in fact, it's very, very technical. Uh, it's there as a magnet for your eyes, for your attention. Icons play an essential role in the everyday worship of Orthodox parishes. You have a family reunion, right? So you come in when there are plenty of people there. Well, of course, you probably will come in and, and greet the guests. If, if, it's, if, it's, if it's a relative or something like that, you probably will give them a hug or a kiss, right? And the rest of them, there are many of them, so the rest of them you are not necessarily going to come in and, uh, and venerate specifically, but you say hi. And you are there in that room full of people, and you are happy. You are in the presence of someone whom you love. That's the main use of iconography in the church. The images that we make are not designed to create an impact. They will leave you free.